Good morning, everybody. This is Mark Coleman. I'm Mark Coleman from the Grassroot Institute of Hawaii, and I'm here today for Talking Tax. It's a program that Tom Yamachika, president of the Tax Foundation, has been hosting for years here on Think Tech. And today we're going to talk about a bill that is still alive in the state legislature, the 2024 state legislature bill, uh, Senate Bill 1035. Uh, it would provide a GET exemption for medical services. And I, and I believe dental services, some of them anyway, um, paid for by medical, Medicaid, Medicare, and TRICARE. Um, it's got an interesting history. Uh, it involves a number of issues that it could uh, tax doctor shortages, uh, doctor fairness, tax fairness, and so on. So it, it's, let's talk about it. Let's have Tom set the stage here once again. Okay, and, and uh, thank you very much, Mark. And uh, before and by the way, Tom, further, by the way, Tom, yes, I know you're probably going to cut me off, but we have a special guest today. Um, I was just going to introduce hers, but you, you can go ahead. <laughs> I got carried away. Uh, it's Malia Hill, Malia Blom Hill, our policy director from the Grassroot Institute of Hawaii, who, like you, Tom, uh, carefully uh, monitors what's going on over at the legislature. So that's why we invited her. She's well up on this bill. She helps write most of our testimonies uh, or writes most of our testimonies, actually. So. Um, just want to acknowledge Malia. Thank you very much for being here today, Malia. Really finally got you on the program. No, thank you for having me. I'm glad I could finally join. Yeah, so uh, Malia is joining us from Washington, D.C. today or somewhere close to it. And uh, uh, like Mark said, she uh, does some legislative monitoring uh, from her you know, lofty perch wherever she's at. And, uh, and, and, and she is uh, one of the architects behind the grassroots, grassroots' current position on this GET exemption. Now, uh, let's, let's kind of start with the, this GET exemption. It, it kind of has a tortured history. Uh, yeah. it, it, it was introduced last year um, basically in the form that it is now. Uh, and uh, more, more on that in a second. But the, the uh, exemption would... Uh, apply to payments to healthcare providers by, uh, you know, the three big uh, government payors, Medicare, Medicaid, and Tricare. Um, a the the bill went through the legisl the legislature last. This is Senate Bill Ten Thirty Five. Uh, it went through the legislature last year, crossed over to the House Finance Committee, didn't hear it, so it so it stopped there. Uh, this year, another bill, uh, House Bill Sixteen Seventy Five got introduced and uh, it would have exempted primary care uh, rather than, you know, whoever, uh, whoever the payor was, uh, <laughs> it would have exempted primary care for, uh, for, for doctors and uh, I believe uh, uh, certain, certain nurses and uh, the, uh, that bill went all the way uh, from the House to the Senate, but got stopped in the Ways and Means Committee. Uh, when that happened, um, the Finance Committee, who was kind of like, uh, uh, who was the holdup on the issue last year, they said, all right, uh, we got a two-year session. Let us resurrect uh, Senate Bill 1035, which is one of last year's bills, the same bill from last year. And it's and it's now moving and it has gone into conference. Yeah. So, so the question, you know, number one is, you know, what, why, why is a GET exemption worthy uh, in our current time of financial need? Okay, uh, and and to start, I, I think. And when you say financial need, you're talking about the state. The state in general. Yeah, we're all financially in need around here, but they've got big problems this year. Yeah, I mean, it was it was bigger uh, a little bit before. Uh, I think council revenues backed off a little bit, saying it's it's not as bad as we thought it was going to be. Uh, so there is some uh, some room for tax reform, um, and this is one of the uh, bills that is being looked at for tax reform. And the question again is 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 why? Yeah. Um, but let's let's kind of start off by 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 looking at you know th there's a fairness issue here, and the fairness issue uh, is that. Uh, individual or small group physician practices 
get taxed uh, at uh, at four and a half percent on on their gross proceeds from healthcare. Uh, however, hospitals that are organized as nonprofits, and all of them are okay because of this issue, I think, uh, are exempt from GET on the same medical services now. The insurers and the big government payors uh, pay healthcare providers the same fee for the same services. It doesn't matter whether they're taxable or tax exempt. Furthermore, they say uh, that if you are going to sign on and get paid by Medicare, Medicaid, or Tricare, you must accept what we pay you in full payment of your services, meaning. You cannot go and surcharge your patient or anybody else uh, for the tax, which is which is what uh, some uh, I, I, like like my dentist, for example, he he surcharges me uh, the GET they 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 uh, impose on him, and, and I got to pay like a you know five bucks or something every time I go see the dentist. Uh, you know, this that's is not pass it on thing. The That's idea the pass that it on to pass it on. And the Department of Taxation, Hawaii State Department of Taxation has made this big, you know, they can pass it on, they can pass it on. And the doctors, as you're going to saying, you know, are saying, no, no, not necessarily. Yeah. And and, and Malia has pointed out, I, I, they do include Medicaid here, I believe, but I don't think, but they could pass that along, right, Malia? Um, that, that's and, actually the gray area. Um, we talked to a lot of doctors and you know, they they were concerned because, um, and I, I'm stepping on top, I apologize, because the Department of Taxation put out a guidance saying, you know, just pass it on, even TRICARE or Medicare or Medicaid. And the doctors knew that TRICARE won't let you do it. And they sought um, guidance from Medicare, uh, which came back and said, yeah, no, you can't, you cannot pass that on. If you do, we will we will come after you, basically. And Medicaid is a gray area where some of them are afraid to because they think it'll be like Medicare. And some of them just don't want to because it's uncomfortable. Like, you know, Tom was saying, you know, do you want to just charge your Medicaid? You know, someone who you've established is, you know, fiscally, you know, in need, financially in need. Um, you want to just give them a bill for the tax? It's a very, it's a very strange thing. So even if they were comfortable, you know, even if they were sure that it was legal, and there is a bit of a question mark about that for some doctors, they don't want to because it's kind of the opposite of, you know, what you feel you should be doing when it comes to a Medicaid. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Med Medicaid patients are, you know, by definition, those, uh, you know, who are, who are, you know, lack the money that, that, uh, that most of us have struggling. So, so, uh, you know, they, they're, they're in need. And so what you're going to bill them and then, uh, and then, and then not bill anybody else. Uh, that, that seems, um, yeah. Yeah. Totally wrong. Yeah. And then, and then, plus uh, one has to wonder about the administrative cost of chasing down a Medicaid patient for the tax. You know, it's just something that they don't really say, but it doesn't cost nothing to the office to try to tax that Medicaid patient, you know, the, the office visit or whatever. And, and that, you know, just piles on to the amount that the doctor ends up owing to the state. So, so regardless of the gray area, this bill would clarify that, that this, that paying a GET on the reimbursements from those programs, all three of them would be exempt from the GET. Right. I mean, it would create parity with the, with the hospitals. Right. And, 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 and historically, I, I, you know, I've heard about doctors quitting their private practices to go work with hospitals. And this is probably one reason, right? Uh, probably. I mean, if you work with a hospital, uh, you're an employee of the hospital, the hospital's a tax exempt. Uh, you as an employee don't get, don't get uh, GET taxed on your, on your salary. Right. I mean, nobody gets there's an exemption from the GET for salaries. Mm. Okay. Um, so, uh, so, so you beat the tax that way. Uh, but, but where does that leave, uh, you know, people in rural areas or, or, or people, you know, without a hospital 
you know, close by. Uh, the I think the short answer is the only health care they have is, you know, these uh, uh, small physician practices or, or mini clinics that are located where they are. Uh, and, um, uh, and, and right now the, the, the GET is set up to whack them. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of those closed recently on Kauai, we had a seminar, um, a year or two ago, uh, featuring a few local doctors, including one on Kauai, a a Kauai, a rural clinic. And he was saying this, this tax is just beating me down. I don't know how much, how much longer we can survive. And he had horrible stories about the doctor shortages over there and how it was ridiculous that this tax policy is discouraging the doctors from continuing their important work. And, and, and sure enough, within the year he had to close, it was Kauai North Shore Clinic or something like that. Um, yeah, they, um, you know, there's some like 160 pages of testimony on this one on this bill being hurt when it got hurt in finance when they resurrected it um and heard it in house finance and you know there's no testimony in opposition all the testimony is support or comment and enormous amounts of it is just from individual doctors saying you know please you know we we need this we can't we can't operate um there's you know a doctor who one of the gastroenterologists from aloha gastroenterology talks about how they still treat Medicare, Medicaid, and TRICARE patients, but some don't because having to pay the tax, because the tax on Medicare, Medicaid, TRICARE, you know, it's owed to the state out of the doctor's seat. So the doctor is responsible for it. Even, you know, so the federal government's, you know, the you know reimbursement payments, they come, but they're locked in and they can't pass the tax on, but they still owe the tax to they got this Hawaii state government. So they have to, that comes out of their gross receipts. I thought to say um, two years ago, well, in 2020, so more than two years ago, <laughs> in 2020, there was another version of this bill that was working its way through the legislature right until everything shut down. And in that, uh, when that bill was being heard, Hawaii Medical Association was testifying in favor of it. And they basically said that it's about paying the GET for uh, private practice physicians in doc, uh, in Hawaii ends up being about 13 and a half percent of their um, their net revenue. So it's a not ins- that's not an insignificant amount of your margin. And they're basically just saying like, this just destroys our margin that we don't take Medicare or Medicaid patients now. We can't we can't afford to that kind of thing. Yeah, one of the key pieces of of testimony uh, was from the. Uh... State Health Planning and Development Agency. Yeah, you, as you say in your article. Your... Yeah, that, that agency you know, regulates how many health facilities can be set up and where. Uh, and they said, um, and I quote, Hawaii must exempt independent clinical practices for GET or face increasing shortages and serious health consequences for our population and particularly our neighbor islands this is not exaggerated. End of quote. It's it, it's very interesting that a that a state agency would come out and say that you know in so many words. And that one, that agency in particular, that's a good endorsement, you know, for this bill. What 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 do you think prompted the legislators to revive ten thirty five? That's interesting. Uh, um... I mean, I I heard gossip. Do you do you have anything solid? Bob? I don't. I don't have. I don't have anything solid. <laughs> what What did you hear? Gossip qualifies. Gossip, uh, pure speculation, uh, allegedly. Um, well, I think that the reason to prefer this one over the other is because the Medicare Medicaid Tricare is um very definite and slightly bigger. It's a bigger uh of number of uh. It covers more things than the previous version, the one that was being heard this year. Um, gossip says that the reason it didn't pass last year was because there was a little bit of, I don't know, I have to gather that the legislature did not like the push that they were getting for it, that the uh, the sheer um, the sheer eagerness of the medical community over it had them worrying about it. Um, although it also could have just been that they decided to do something else instead because 
This is the Hawaii legislature. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I had heard, um, uh, you know, last year that uh, uh, Finance Chair Yamashita's decision not to hear the bill was uh, uh, was intentional. It, it wasn't inadvertent, uh, and, uh, and he just had some philosophical differences with the with the prospect of, you know, giving tax relief to the quote unquote wealthy. Yeah. Okay. That, that was a big issue last year. I mean, I, you, you remember last year when uh, Governor Green introduced the Green Affordability Plan, which is which was a uh, a move to give bracket relief on our income tax to basically everybody, especially for for Alice families. Um, uh, Speaker Speaker of the House uh, Psyche came right out and said, "No, we're not going to pass this." Because we don't want to give tax relief for the wealthy, uh, and and I think that's perhaps one reason uh, why finance didn't proceed with it. Now, now I think in the meantime, um, uh, you know, the the health agencies are coming in and saying, "Look, you know, um, we're losing docs at a furious rate. Uh, we have." Uh, Underserved, underserved populations now, and it's getting worse. Uh, we got to do something about this, and maybe that maybe that's why they you know they 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 looked at a change of heart. Well, Grassroot did put out a report for the, for any of them who are concerned about revenue loss, and and actually I think we did get a letter. We sent out an action alert the other day, urging people to you know write their representatives and state senators about this bill and one said yeah i'm all for it but what are they going to do for the money that they wouldn't get if they lift this tax if they exempt these payments from the get and i think our study said something like well that covered actually primary doctors in general not just these payments but you know i think the conclusion was that the money they save the money they're not going to bring in will be more than made up, or at least almost made up, by uh, generate uh, revenues generated by increased economic activity due to the doctors having lower costs. Um, yeah, when we did our report on it, we said it would only cost about two hundred million to exempt AMP, yeah. and that's not that's not even what's at stake here. Um, last year, when Do when Department of Taxation testified on this specific bill, ten thirty five. They estimated it would only cost somewhere around fifty million to sixty-five million uh, moving forward. So, and that's just the Medicare, Medicaid, Tricare one. Like to exempt everything would cost more, but you do have to consider, you know, if it brings more doctors, we're also just bringing more revenues to Hawaii in general, so that they kind of balance out a little bit and it doesn't end up being as high cost. Yeah, and 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 you have a societal need. I mean. People get right. sick, right? Yeah, yeah. Sports, that was the uh, point. And, and it's a, it's, it's a, if you calculated it as an expense toward solving the social problem, that's money well spent. It seems to me. Well, plus we are the only state, you know, that taxes. Uh, well, we're the only state that taxes Medicare, Medicaid, and Tricare for sure, which is really just taxing doctors. It's not really taxing Medicare. Medicaid and Tricare, That's but we're the reimbursements also, to the doctors. Yeah, yeah, um, but we're all. Well, I think I think New Mexico, New Mexico does too. Not anymore. New Mexico, New Not Mexico anymore. passed a law last year, so New Mexico. So now we are all by ourselves. New Mexico actually allows deduction of co-payments and deductibles now from its gross receipt tax, and that went into effect last summer. So um, we really are kind of on our own now. And New Mexico had already had an exception for the Medicare, Medicaid, Tricare. So it's, you know, there you could say that there's there's no strong, you know, revenue reason. It's not raking in the money. But, you know, the, even more importantly, there's this public policy. You know, we don't, nowhere else in the country are people taxed to go to the doctor. Nowhere else does anyone say, as a matter of public policy, the government should take some of the, you know, some of the money <laughs> that changes hands when you're sick. So, and, and that's, that's probably the most, you know, important element of this. It, you know, it has an effect on healthcare in Hawaii. We have all these doctors, why no one wants to listen to them going, 
we can't afford, it's too expensive to be in private practice here. Please take this away. It will make it more affordable to have private practice. It discourages people from treating Medicare, Medicaid, TRICARE patients. Well, not necessarily TRICARE patients, but especially the Medicare, Medicaid patients. And, um, and yet there's this resistance and it's, it's confusing. You know, why resist it? It seems so common sense. It seems like such a small ask relative to other things. Okay, well, well, let me let me be the devil, devil's advocate then. Okay, you're asking for a tax break for the wealthy. Uh, why, why don't you let the free market take care of this? Because that's that's what it usually does, right? Well, I mean, you could say that the free market is taking care of it by sending doctors to the mainland where they can actually make more money. <laughs> <laughs> but you're are you leading? Are you leading up? Tom, are you leading up to your point that we don't really have a free market in doctors in Hawaii, which is also true. <laughs> Why, why? Why is that? Well, in your article, you 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 blamed it on uh, insurance payments and what was that other thing you said? Well, I mean, you know, we have a dominance of insurers and government payers in the uh, medical services market. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that that's that's true. But I mean, is that is that really a a a, a sufficient reason to to justify an imbalance in the GET? You well, you know, we do have, we, we use the GET for policy purposes all the time. This one, uh, 1035 would go right underneath the exemption that is there for uh, renting and leasing airplane engines. So, you know, why should, it, why do doctors rank below the rent and lease of airplanes? I think there's exemptions for orchards and goodness knows what else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, that was another point. There are all kinds of exemptions. We talked about this before, about 50 of them. And you could argue that there should be no exemptions, but if you're going to have them, this one seems to be a pretty good one. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, you, you can justify uh, some exemptions on the ground of fairness, that, that, the, that the, tax treat, the tax system um, treats different areas of the same market unequally, which is the case here. Because because the hospitals skate, um, mm -hmm. right? So that's that's one problem, uh, and another problem is you know you've got a uh, a service that is necessary for uh, you know societal good, and and there is uh, you know substantial amount of free market restriction already uh, right. because of the dominance of these uh, these big players. Well, either these doctor licensing, that's a, that's like the, the original, that's like one of the original medical license. That's one of the original occupational licensure things. But, you know, and Milton Friedman wrote a whole, a whole chapter in his book, um, cap, um, what was the name of that book? Um, on one of his books, he wrote, uh, capitalism and freedom, I think it was, uh, and it was a really groundbreaking, uh, column by, you know, Milton Friedman, um, renowned economist about the history of, uh, licensure for doctors so they it's a restricted market it's not a free market to begin with that's why they make more money they they can exclude doctors you know they can exclude competition through that system but that aside it's still way not a free market there's still all kinds of interventions into the market um certificate of need laws you know and so on and now we have these taxes so it gets um it gets pretty tough yeah and, and as you were saying it it doesn't help that the uh, Department of Taxation has no clue about, you know, what, what the regulatory laws provide. Yeah. Yeah. The, actually giving, you know, advice that, you know, the other doctors are running around saying, don't listen to this, don't listen to this, makes it uh, rough. But, you know, if you, if you were, you've seen the kinds of, you know, programs and such that we will endorse uh, in order to try to solve doctor shortages and healthcare access problems. And, you know, the state would think nothing of pouring hundreds of millions of dollars into a program if it, if it would solve the doctor short. And yet, it, this is just saying, hey, instead of spending hundreds of millions, just forego collecting, you know, 50 million or 100 exactly. or 200 million. Right. And, and allow, allow that market to <laughs> sort of try to take care of itself. To yeah, it. yeah. Yeah, this does, this has brought up, you know, ideas such as, pay for schooling of doctors at the UH and forgive student loans and all kinds of things that would cost money. The, 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 and this would be a, a simpler um, solution or option. 
But just to clarify, Tom, uh, uh, Malia, when we talk about, you know, maybe people don't know what TRICARE is, maybe we should explain what that is. So a TRICARE is basically like, um, um, it's a, the health insurance program for people in the military in the uniformed services of the United States. So in, including like, um, uh, Army, Navy, Air Force, Coast Guard, and I think, uh, you know, some other agencies like NOAA. So when a doctor treats a military person and they get some, they get a reimbursement payment from, from the federal government, from the, I don't, I don't know who, who in the federal government, but they get, so that becomes, that's like. Yeah, that's just the health insurance for the military effectively. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Yes, mostly, mostly the OD and Department of Defense. So yeah. do you think this one is going to pass, Tom, Malia? Uh, I keep my fingers crossed. Ooh, yeah, I really hope it does. Um, it has so much support, especially from the uh, medical community. And, you know, I, I think that I'm optimistic. I hope it does. I think that they have been listening. You know, we have the uh, uh, doctor's licensing compact that passed last year and nurse licensure compact that is uh, being considered this year. Um, there's been a willingness to discuss certificate of need, and these are all healthcare related forms. Um, and so of course, our governor's a doctor, and our yeah, so it seems like it goes with this. So one hopes that we're we're moving in this direction, um, whether we do or not. I guess that remains to be seen. Um, I just want to take the last minute here to um, note that this is probably the last show of Talking Tags on Think Tech Hawaii. Tom wrote a wonderful column this week acknowledging uh think jay fidel and carol mon lee um uh, the history of think tech what a wonderful service it's been providing through the years and um i i, I it'll be a sad moment when it stops it'll still be around it'll have an archive that can be accessed online but uh tom tom's regular talking tax program here uh we're gonna have to try and find another another venue for it I mean, it's been a, it's been a valuable valuable program through the years to provide information such as what we've been discussing today. Uh, so thank you, Tom, for doing this. Thank you, Think Tech Hawaii, for providing this forum. Um, Malia, thanks a lot for being here today. Really appreciate it. I'll see you thank down there. And Tom, we'll see you too. Yeah, we'll be around. All right. Much aloha, everybody. Thank you very much for being here. Aloha. to announce that ThinkTech Hawaii is moving into a new phase and will not be producing regular talk shows after April 30th. We will retain our website and YouTube channel and will accept new content on an ad hoc basis. We are also developing a legacy archive program to provide continuing public access to our content. If you can help us cover the costs of the transition and the development of our legacy archive program, please make a donation on thinktechaway.com. Thanks so much. Aloha.